The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bundominium, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, what's it like being a responsible grown-up? To which I say, I never learned the difference between alligators and crocodiles. <laughs> I guess I was sick that day or something, but I never figured it out. For some 100%. reason, for some reason, I, I am pretty good with stupid bullshit like that. Yeah. Like, I will never need to know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. But I do. Yeah. You know? I, I will never are... need to know the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite. But I do. Sure. Yeah. There are ways that I know to try and tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. Number one, check its ID, because it will say on there whether it's an alligator or a crocodile. So just ask for its like driver's license. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, this is the best way. You sneak up behind it and say, a crocodile! And if it turns around, it's definitely a crocodile. But if it's an alligator, it's going to say, I don't know what that Mexican is saying. I am not a crocodile. I'm an alligator. And then it'll just keep swimming. Yeah. Do you, do you know another good way? Hmm. Okay. If you just say, see you later. Ah. Because the alligator will say, yeah, see you too. But the yeah. crocodile will get all snooty about it and say, I'm a crocodile. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a crocodile. We say peace be the journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we say assalamu alaikum. <laughs> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is, just to be clear, I do write what you. I don't write. I don't write down in my notes, write what you know. I write, write, W-H-A-T-C-H-A-H. -H. Write yeah. what you know. And I try and pronounce that properly every time. It's the little <laughs> things that, that you listeners uh, don't pay attention to that mean the most to me. Write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and with a million finger quotes, hard working. Employee at my local bookstore for almost 17 years. Yes. If my employee history were a person, then it would be coming of age. And by coming of age, I mean hastily losing its virginity in the back seat of a parent's Ford Taurus. Yes. Like all real Americans. <laughs> and as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to rub my sweaty fingers all over your face. With this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Now, at the top of Notes from the Bookstore, I would just like to say very quickly that I believe that Notes from the Bookstore is responsible for Melio Yiannopoulos' house falling down. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. No, that, that was entirely us. You yes. are 100% correct. You know, leading yeah. up to the hurricane... Leading up to the hurricane, there were so many people out there. Oh, it's the wrath of God, and it's the gays, and this is what's happening. And climate change isn't real. My sky fairy just just is angry, you know. And you read through it, and you're just like horseshit, horseshit, horseshit. And then when Milo's house fell down, I was like, you know, well, maybe, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, he is gay, and he is a major douchebag. True. You know. I think that a hurricane ravaged Florida because God was just a big fan of the theme park Pirate World. 
which is where, of course, where they filmed Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Yes. <laughs> and he's just still upset that that cl- got closed down. Thanks, Disney. Mm-hmm. This week on Notes from the Bookstore, we are talking about two different topics, and that's it. Okay. Number one, we are talking about a uh, famous uh, cook, chef, and author whom I hate. And number two, we are talking about a certain brand of toys. Number one on this very small list, let's talk about Reed Drummond. Bunny, do you know who Reed Drummond is? No. Reed Drummond is a woman, and she lived in New York, and she had an extravagant lifestyle in New York, and then she met a guy, and they fell in love, and they decided to move to Oklahoma, and she was a fish out of water. What? I'm a New Yorker. Now I'm living in Oklahoma? (laughs) So she wrote a book about it, and she called it The Pioneer Woman. It's all about this uh, New York socialite suddenly living on a farm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, And it became a bestseller, so then she decided to write The Pioneer Woman cookbook, and that was a big hit. So she decided to write uh, five more cookbooks and then release them as a box set, and she's turned it into this big, massive literal media empire so so roughly what i'm hearing roughly 20 or so books because she went camping once yeah uh the thing that they don't tell you though the thing that they don't mention in any of the books or anything like that is that the person that she married is actually one of the top landowners in the entire midwest so it's not like she lived in a penthouse apartment and is now suddenly living on a small one mule farm somewhere, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh no, no, I'm still living this rich life. But in Oklahoma, when? <laughs> So she turned this one book that she wrote into a media empire. She's got a biography. She's got a series of cookbooks, a kid's picture book series that at times I am obligated to smile about and say through a pain smile that the book is awesome. (laughs) I also believe she has a clothing line and some sort of HGTV or Food Network television show, I think. But I don't know because I refuse to look up anything about her because I'm not spending any effort on Reed Drummond. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, basically her story is like one of privilege, but here's the truth. Um, Middle-aged Midwestern housewives have raised her up on this pedestal. She is basically the patron saint of bored Midwestern women now. (laughs) Reed Drummond, like a like a like a like a forty nine year old housewife, to me, in, to in me. Enid, Oklahoma, sees yeah. Reed Drummond on the television and says, "You know what? I am gonna open up that Etsy business." <laughs> Thank you, Reed Drummond. I am gonna make my necklaces. <laughs> She's a freaking hero here, and you can't shake her. But for your, from your description of her, what she's sounding like to me is a, a little House on the Prairie cosplayer. Yeah, the way that I see it is I see her as being a representation of one specific episode of Parks and Recreation. Yeah. Where Ron Swanson makes these chairs and it takes him a really long time and she, he makes like maybe five a year and it takes him forever and the wood has to be just right and then he gives them away and some woman uh gets one of the chairs and decides that that's one of her items yeah and she's like this style guru who used to live in new york and now she's moved back to pawnee indiana but now she's the most popular person in pawnee and so she's like the high class upper class style diva of the town (laughs) And you're like, oh my god, you made you made this email list, Ron. 
and Ron couldn't care less, but this is such a big deal for everybody else. Yeah. Basically, that's Reed Drummond. My my brain is translating that into an episode of Andy Griffith. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just picturing her coming to Mayberry. There's nothing else yeah, there. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but no, but that's a good basis. So now her new new venture, Re Drummond's new new venture, is the official Pioneer Woman magazine. Okay. And <clears throat> every once in a while, there's a magazine which becomes the thing. Yeah. Every once in a while it happens, like um, an episode or two or three ago, we talked about uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines, yeah. the white privileged couple who has a home decorating show on HGTV, and yeah. their book is a big deal, and they're Christian and they love each other, and they had a magazine called magnolia magazine and and literally just everybody's just do you have the do you have the 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 first issue of magnolia magazine it's like no we haven't gotten it yet but and you hung up on me gee thanks that was rude <laughs> here let me hang up the phone it's ringing again barnes and no uh, this is steve how can i no no i'm sorry we have not gotten magnolia magazine in yet can... and i said barnes and no who knows what that could be? I did not say the whole thing. I could have no. said Barnes and Nutsack. You could have. I could have said Barnes and Nutmeg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could have said Barnes and... Uh, Newt Rockney. Yeah. could have uh-huh. said Barnes and Nepotism. Yeah. Who are my That's lawyers? When, yeah. That's when uh, Johnny Barnes has a uh, bookstore, but you know who he puts in charge of it? Uh, Ivanka Barnes. <laughs> and Ivanka Barnes is like, thanks for making me in charge, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. I and love that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there was this limited edition artsy fartsy, the people who made it are definitely living in Brooklyn somewhere, food magazine. And it was like a food slash craft magazine. And um we only got like five issues of it. And then we quickly sold out of it, but then people were calling like, do you have, do you have issue number one of, I don't even remember the name of it. Like Magnolia. Uh, cool food magazine. No, this is a different one. Oh. Do you have issue number one of a uh, cool food magazine? No, we don't have it. One woman actually said, well, I need that. Okay. You have no idea how much these are going for on eBay, but oh my I swear God. to God, here's my name. Here's my phone number. If you find an issue like in the back or somewhere, give me a call. I will split it with you on eBay. Okay. That's like, it's going for like $150. So if you find it, please give me a call. Wow. Yeah, every once in a while, a magazine will just send people into a feeding frenzy. I had no idea that existed. Hey, it doesn't happen a lot. It, it it barely happens, but when it happens, people go nuts for it. And as far as I can tell, Pioneer Woman magazine was originally supposed to be a Walmart exclusive, that only Walmart was going to get the magazine. But then Walmart didn't get a lot of them, and now apparently all of our stores are now getting the magazine. And so, oh my God, women in this state are salivating they are frothing at the mouth they are going cujo for this magazine (laughs) they want this magazine so bad that i got trapped in a car cujo style yeah there were just five middle-aged housewives just frothing at the mouth outside of my car just barking redrumming over and over again (laughs) but apparently today we finally got it in, and thank goodness, because literally, for the past couple of days, we would be getting a call every 15 to 20 minutes about the magazine. Yeah. Do you have Pioneer Woman magazine? Did you get that in yet? Yeah. People were going nuts. People were going nuts. Pioneer Woman magazine. Reed Drummond, the patron saint of bored Midwestern housewives. Did they sell out? I don't know. We got it in today. Oh, so you got it in today. Yeah, no, we literally got it in today. 
Because I saw because we took a picture of it for our store's Instagram account. Yeah. I usually don't pay attention to the Instagram account unless they take a picture of me, which they do a lot <laughs> because of my story times. Yeah. So I saw that you, you posted something about the best storyteller. Oh yeah, no. Uh, the 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 corporation has a magazine that comes out, magazine slash newsletter. It, nice and glossy. It's only like twelve pages, but it comes out once, uh, four times a year. And what last year I think, uh, they they wrote an article about me. They called me the king of story times. And so basically, that's like right up there with CEO. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, that's more than CEO. I'm the king of this company. So mm-hmm. move over, Len. Have you used I'm in charge now. your kingly powers yet? Um, just like uh, just like Tony Stark, I am reinstituting what is it? Uh, uh, Prima Nocta. Nocta. Prima Nocta. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first thing. It's the first thing I'm doing. I I I. I was at home and I was drinking and I was bored. And then I remembered that um, the company on their website just said, do, do you have any ideas for an article for our newsletter? And I'm like, you know what? I'll send them a couple of weird pictures of me doing story time and I'll write a little like two, three paragraph blurb and I'll see you know, maybe they'll use it. Maybe they won't. I don't care. I'm bored right now. So I sent them a thing and then they sent me the article back like two days later saying they wanted to run it. And the best part is, is that they used a sentence that I never said. They literally got my article and put a sentence in my mouth. (laughs) Nice. What type of sentence? Um, when I exit receiving and become Mr. Steve, something truly magical happens. <laughs> I've never said that before in my life. You gotta be kidding me. Where makes did you, you get that? Makes you sound like Doug Henning. Yeah, yeah. It's magic, boys and girls. It's the power <laughs> of magic. But I gotta say this to him. I never said that sentence before, but once they used that sentence in an article, and they, they had quotes, you know, ar- around it and everything, like I said that to them during some interview that never happened. Yeah. But oh my God, I have said that sentence about 50 times now <laughs> because I love it so much. <laughs> when I exit receiving and become Mr. Steve, I something truly magical. I find that interesting that you are so in love with a quote from yourself that you never said. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's, damn. He, that's like yeah. James Earl Jones's plaque. Like, if <laughs> yeah, that happened yeah. to me, I yeah. would totally keep it. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Just like I, I talked my... My my friend Joey, who has the radio show, um, he um, he's a musician. He's a DJ. Okay, I was able to talk him into doing a country song. Nice. Yeah, and I was like, think about how like like if I became a hit, me personally, on the country charts, that would be like the proudest moment of my life. Yeah. Here's Bunny, Williams. Here's Bunny Williams with his new hit single, I Kissed My Woman With My Fist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're wanted by the police and my wife thinks you're dead. Yeah. Actual country song and it's the greatest country song in the world. Just to be clear. So so he is currently working on that. I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> nice. My favorite country album is from punk musician Kepi Gooley. He's the he was the lead singer of the Groovy Ghoulies and they released like a bajillion albums and then they broke up. So yeah. since then he's been kind of experimenting. He's released a couple of solo albums and then he came up with a band, but the band is just called Kepi the Band. 
mm-hmm. and it's literally just his solo stuff, but with band backing him up. He also released a kids album, and he released an album where he got all of his punk songs from the Groovy Ghoulies and redid them as country songs. Uh huh. And it's so interesting to hear a punk song that you've heard for like a a decade done as a country song. It's perfect. It's a perfect album. Yeah, I freaking love it. But anyway, a Pioneer Woman magazine was supposed to be a Walmart exclusive. And speaking of exclusives, let's talk about Funko Pops. Okay. Funko I don't Pops. I don't get those things. I don't I don't The heads don't even bobble, okay? Um the Marvel ones do due to legal reasons. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. Because Funko Pops just makes vinyl <laughs> figures. Just unmovable vinyl figures. But yeah. apparently a long time ago, Marvel sold exclusive rights to like Hasbro or Kenner or something like that for action figures. And, and and there are rules like these are action fig- we are the only company that can sell Marvel action figures Marvel action figures movable tiny action figures and so when Funko said I, I, we want to make these uh, Marvel characters the people who had the rights to the Marvel action figures said uh, Funko can't do that because that's an action figure and only we can do action figures. So Marvel said, screw it. Let's make it a bobblehead. <laughs> so all of the Funko Pops are unmovable figures, except for the fucking Marvel ones, which <laughs> legally have to be bobbleheads. <laughs> and it pisses me off because I want to get the Marvel ones. I got a Doctor Doom one for the kids, and they played with it and literally just like, oh, cool, you got us a Doctor Doom figure. That's awesome. I already broke the neck. <laughs> I just find it's it funny. Like, every I just, time, I'm like, oh! I just find it find it hysterical that they are legal just the line they are legally bound to bobble yeah yeah every yeah all of the funko pops are unmovable figures except for the marvel ones which heads bobble i want to get the magneto one for maxwell i want to i i already got the dr do one and and you know he's Kids stretch out the necks in like five seconds on freaking bobblehead. So I, I yeah. really can't get any of these Marvel ones, and it sucks. And I've tried a couple of times, but it just never works. Yeah. So, so anyway, I, just fun- the, just the whole idea that that by law something yeah. must bobble. <laughs> yeah. That's why a lot of times you go to Walmart and you see these uh, Marvel quote-unquote action figures but what they are is that they're bigger and longer than your normal action figures they're like the size of your forearm yeah you know those big marvel figures that they make honey that are like this big yeah yeah these giant 10 inch figures and you can only move their like arm or maybe their leg but but other than that they don't move at all because legally we got to make sure that these figures we're making are not action figures we their their knees can't move their elbows yeah. can't move they can't have too much movement and they can't be too small that's why <laughs> when you go to the store a lot of times you see these like massive 10 inch marvel figures because marvel is trying to figure out ways to sell action figures without you know getting sued yeah I, I, I am just running through a scenario through my mind. You know, an FBI agent rushes into an office really hurried, and he hands a memo to Robert Mueller, and he looks at it, and it's like, oh, in, 20, in 20, 2006, Trump bought a Funko doll. And Robert Mueller looks up the assistant, like, find out if it bobbles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they track it, it down. Bizarre. And they track it down. And they find out it does bobble. <gasps> and it's a Wolverine figure. <gasps> you know? And it bobbles. And then Mueller is just looking at it and examining. And it's like, Wolverine. That's the code name for it. Ilio Castaccio. 
this Funko product is a tie to Russia. Nice. <laughs> because it bobbles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Funko Pops are the bane of my existence. They are such the bane of my existence that they're also the Joker of my existence, the Mr. Freeze of my existence. Yeah. They're the Penguin of my existence. <laughs> they're the Bat Mite of my existence. Maxwell helped me write that joke. Maxwell helped me write that. I'm really proud of that, of the fact that Maxwell helped me write that. So Funko Pops are small pup culture figures. They're incredibly hot right now. Yeah. And here is why they are popular. It's my theory that the Funko Corporation is trying to get every single solitary person in America to buy at least one. Yes. And the way that they're doing that is literally by making Funko Pop figures for everything. Funko Pops are currently making, among other things, Funko Pops for, deep breath, NFL, Hellboy, WWE, Golden Girls, Wacky Races, NBA, Twilight, Sharknado, Disney, Mystery Science Theater, Rick and Morty, Harry Potter, Metallica, Supernatural, G.I. Joe, South Park, Stephen King, Five Nights at Freddy's, Disney's Frozen, Bob Ross, La La Land, Star Wars, My Little Pony, Marvel, DC, Wizard of Oz, Buffy, Doctor Who, Tron, Star Trek, NHL, Stranger Things, Parks and Rec, Elvira, Game of Thrones, Looney Tunes, BoJack Horseman, Dr. Seuss, even the Elf movie I hate. Um, oh my god. To name a few, there are so many more that they make. I'm, I'm disappointed. What? They don't have glitter for his Funko Pops. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, they're making BoJack Horseman figures. Exactly. I, I so, really, I really think that if ever I roll Bob back out again, Bob is going to have to join Glitter Force. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So basically, Funko's plan is to make so many Funko Pops that eventually everyone will break down and buy one. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, so I think, and, fun- and, and and sometimes I'll see a Funko a Funko Pop thing come up, and I'm like. That's kind of cool. And, and then I burn myself with a cigarette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that literally they're going through the U.S. census and just randomly picking. Okay, right here. His name is Levi Jenkins. Let's find out what Levi likes. Okay. Oh, look at that. Levi likes 1980s sitcoms. <laughs> Uh, it's a, the, oh, the Mork and Mindy. No, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. We are announcing the Eight is Enough Funko Pop line. Yeah. The Waltons. Yeah. So Funko didn't get me for which a long would, time. Which would be then... advertised. The Waltons would definitely be advertised in Prairie Woman magazine. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Pioneer Woman. Thank Pioneer. you. The thing, the thing about it, it, Funko didn't get me for a really, really, really long time, and then they released the Godzilla Funko Pop, which is actually like twice as big as your regular Funko Pop. Yeah, and that's when I'm like, God damn it, I, I kind of need this one, and then <laughs> I got it, and I'm like, okay, I got one Funko Pop, and then that's it. Yeah. But then they released a King Kong one to go with a uh, uh, Kong Skull Island, and I'm like, well, goddamn it, and I'll have to buy both of those. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also want to get the Andre the Giant one, only because it is also twice the size of a regular Funko Pop. So he could fight Godzilla? Yeah, yeah, he's the oh. same size as Godzilla and King Kong, so I like that. You gotta make them fight. So the hipster alternative Gen Xer in me wants to automatically be against these popular little shiznittles, but yeah. oh my god, the Mystery Science Theater Funko Pops are so freaking cute. <laughs> it's just the two bots, and it's so adorable. And I, I, I read a tweet recently that I wanted to bring up to you that someone noticed that in the reboot of Mystery Science Theater, uh, Kinga Forrester keeps calling one of the bots art. 
Yes. And Art is the same name as the robot from other space. Yes. And unfortunately, uh, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Clayton Forrester said, like, yeah, sorry, I looked that up, too. And unfortunately, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> and it's like, damn it, that would have been a really great, like, connection between those Don't two worry, wonderful Daddy. shows. But Don't worry. Don't worry what, Bella? The alternate universe. Alternate universe. There yeah. you go. See? See? So, your local bookstore is striking while the iron is hot. Some stores have converted large swaths of their music and DVD sections into giant Funko Pop sections. While others are doing what they can. My store has three different big, big big-ass displays of Funko Pops, and I'm still drowning of them back in receiving. Yeah. But, Bunny, beware. There are collectors. Yes, there are. There's so many freaking collectors. And, and, the thing- and, and I'm friends with one, and I'm like, where the fuck are you putting all of these things? Oh, my God. Where are you putting them all? And for just, me, yeah, see, I'm Google. being I'm huh. being resistant to this whole Funko Pop thing because I feel that if, if I break down, then I'm the guy who drinks, who likes pumpkin spice. Yeah. You know, it's all that same thing. Yeah. I've got a great idea. I've got a great idea for a video that I came up with today when I was cleaning in the kitchen. Yeah. Apparently we have a pumpkin spice uh, tea bags. Yeah. And I want to just, you know, because it's September and October and November, to get one of those tea bags to clearly do a video where I get the box of pumpkin spice tea and get out one bag and then open it up and then put it on like a record on an LP sleeve. Yeah. Get like a get like a razor and just break it down into little lines and start snorting the pumpkin spice tea. <laughs> You know, that would be a good meme, like, uh, uh, basic bitches in fall be like, and then that's me snorting the pumpkin spice tea. <laughs> I came up with that a couple of hours ago. I think yeah. it's pretty cute. I, I, I think you would need a lot of it so, so that you can go for like a whole Scarface kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I've got it all over my face. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know when the last time was I had to deal with freaking collectors. Yeah. Like, I feel dirty just saying that. <laughs> collectors are looking for limited edition chase figures, which we almost never get. I think over the last two years that I've been a receiving manager, maybe we've gotten like three or four chase figures but we do get limited edition funko pops that are exclusive to our company that you actually can't get anywhere else and that's pretty cool but that's not what the collectors think because they're not freaking buying them (laughs) i mean funko pops sell like cray cray which is long for crazy yeah but our exclusive pops don't sell at all they don't really they don't sell better or worse than regular funko pops uh, there, but but there is a sad side to the world of Funko Pops. See, every time we have a clearance sale, that marks the unfortunate end of a number of poor selling Funko Pop figures that you will never see again. It sounds very much like the Beanie Baby Baby story. It, it, yeah, it's exactly Beanie Babies. It is exactly Beanie Babies. Yeah. It is 100% Beanie Babies. But yeah, every clearance sale we have is basically a funeral for a number of Funko Pops. <laughs> for example, um, during spring clearance, we sadly said goodbye to Star Trek Beyond Funko Pops. Okay. Oh, too bad, so sad. Bye, Star Trek Beyond Funko Pops. And during summer clearance, which which we just finished right now, we said adieu to so many Funko Pops. So, goodbye, Secret Life of Pets. 
<laughs> that was actually a pretty good movie. You should try it. It's on Netflix. It's cute. Yeah. It's a cute film. Yeah. Goodbye, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies Funko Pops. Now, that is not pretty good, and you shouldn't try it. <laughs> and also, Bunny, I bring this up because I know you'll get choked up about this. Yeah. Okay. Farewell, Suicide Squad Funko Pops. Oh. Or, so hold on, let me preface this. Goodbye, non-Harley Quinn and Joker Suicide Squad Funko Pops. Yeah. I That's mean, like, no, the ones I had to get rid of weren't Harley Quinn and Joker. I was getting rid of Boomerang and Colonel Rick Flag. <laughs> Nobody wanted those two sons of bitches. <laughs> Sad. I know you love Suicide Squad, so I knew that that was going to be emotional for you. I, I would just, you know, if I wanted something like that, I, I would rather buy a McFarlane or a McFarlane type. Yeah. You know? Something really yeah. highly detailed. And, you know? Yeah. I kind of want to get little Sebastian from Parks and Rec, but I, but I haven't gotten it. It's adorable. Yeah. The only way Everybody they can get me is if it has to be legally bound to be a bobblehead. Yeah, yeah. Legally bound to bubble. Because that was it when I saw those things. I was like, oh, they don't even bobble. Yeah. What kind of fun is that? Except for the Marvel ones. So bizarre. What a weird caveat. Well, that have. does comfort my soul. Yeah, to know that there are some bobblers. Yeah. There are some ones that bobble out there. Mm. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, that is it from Notes from the Bookstore this week. And remember, kids and kidettes, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is, in five minutes, successfully describe the plot of Twin Peaks without being vague. <laughs> Good luck. Better men have tried and failed. Yes. But if you want to try, you'll get 10% off of all of your purchases. So that's pretty good. Yeah. And cut. <laughs>